Yeah, did we ever get a solution to, uh, for the old guys with the radio? Uh, yeah. Radio Was it radio <laughs> scene? <laughs> uh, we had a conversation <laughs> with that and put it in our request at this point. Okay. So, That's good. That's I don't good. know. Have you seen any of the back on this? Anything for radio? <laughs> well, I know. I wasn't going to say anything. They didn't know how else to eat. You should find the 5% area. I'm not kidding. I'm hoping. Have you ever seen anything in any of the people that are in the world? Arts and pieces to it yet? And I don't think they've sent it back. So. I mean, I was really hoping to keep pushing that tower back so again. This is true. I don't know if that's going to happen. Oh, uh, he's supposed to be tapping in the area. Oh, I thought he was You were speeding right now. No. No. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Yeah, you're going. Come on, yes, sir. Uh, it says 10:59 on the computer. I see it's 11 up there. I checked with the majority leader who said we should go with that. That's on our watches now. Yeah. So, give them the money. And that funds me is for cable. Uh, not direct. No. Well, thank you. There's not a direct line between. Your question in the answer to <laughs> Okay. All right. Only answer. Like some variation. Is that a politician answer right yes, there? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Very creative. Well, maybe. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Let's stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, the minutes. Okay, we have an opportunity to review the minutes. And we'll make a motion. Second. Yes, we got a motion. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. All right. Let's go right into PS1. Resolution authorizing budget modification, sheriff's office medical treatment. Uh, so they're up. They're up about. Uh, I want to say 120 thousand. Uh, in medical costs. That's, it seems that that's going to carry on for the year. Um, any questions on that? Any discussion? Can we get a motion to open it up? Um, I'm sorry. So many. Second. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any discussion? Um, I want to know if there's been any movement anywhere, state, federal, whatever, that when somebody becomes incarcerated that their insurance can go and cover their expenses while they are incarcerated. All right. Well, let's see if we can get that answer for you, Phil. Yeah. Uh, Okay, yeah, because this I, I kind of vaguely remember there was, there was a bill. I don't know. Would that be something that um, NYSEC could support? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I think that's really important. It's ridiculous the amount of money they're paying when they have uh, insurance. Uh, many of them are covered by insurance sometimes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you send them our um, funds, don't we? Isn't the government sending them some of the. Uh, we're not able to back up that. Doing those fines, I mean, they get paid. Why can't they? Yeah, yeah, no. Richard? Yeah, do you have any idea what it said several inmates with higher than usual medical needs? Uh, what are those medical needs? What, what's driving this? Are we arresting more people around that that need recovery? Or, uh, are, you know, people coming in with busted arms? I mean, what is um, it? I'm not prepared to answer that question right now, but I will tell you that it's obviously something that's needed, otherwise it would be getting done. So I can't yeah, that's not what I want. No, I want to know why. Well, the sheriff comes <coughs> here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you didn't know about the big guy, but uh, hopefully he'll show up. Everybody else is here. I'm trying to get that answer. Everyone's different. You can't just say, look, everybody. Yeah, everybody comes in who needs medical care. He's going to get it. They have to get it. You can't to. refuse it. So right. that would be like asthma. Anything. Somebody says they're injured or hurt or pain, yeah. you gotta get medical treatment yeah. regardless of whether they're full of crap or not. Um, I would assume that uh, we have people that are, like I know we have nurses that will look at them, but if they need further treatment, then we have to take them to the hospital. 
this is meta, uh, mental as well. Yes. Yeah. And that's expensive. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. PS2, Resolution Authorizing Budget Modification Sheriff's Office Overtime. Any motion? I'll make it. Second. Exactly. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? They're looking for looks like an additional three hundred thousand. Uh, they're short people. I know they got people in the academy right now, but he says even when that graduates, he's lost more people leaving. He's going to need even more copies, as everybody else does in this county. So, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. PS3, Resolution Authorizing Budgetary Modification Sheriff's Office, Gas and Oil, like all our other departments, they're looking for an increase in gas and oil expenses, expenditures uh, from last year because of the cost increases. Okay. Your motion. Thank you, Miller. Second? Second. Any discussion? Go ahead, Dirk. Well, to get all their gas, it's going to build in. I mean, you pull up the thing, you punch your card in, you fill your patrol car up the gas. Yeah, but I, I guess they would it would still come on their budget line rather than the county I would have the budget line. So, you know, that's why they punch in the cars. Yeah, 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 it's code, so it gets built through. I know it's all coming from the same place, but it's under different lines in the budget. Mm -hmm. Frank, you got a question? Yeah, Bill, you know, what is this, all you know, these expenditures that we're getting now that we're taking out of the inappropriate fund balance? What is that you can take us down to now? Um, we're going to, well, we're still going to be over 40, which is why I'm recommending they come out of fund. None of these coming out of fund bounds are in the main reserve. Reserves are for the, you know, what's your last, cho last choice. Okay. Thank you. Flag. Yeah, Phil, I'm sorry, I didn't bring my budget over here, which is an error on my part. What did we last year budget, give or take, within a few ten years or whatever, for gas? For all the for gas, we'll just say for gas. Yeah. Well, we budgeted based on uh, historic usage, of course, because we didn't know it was going to go through the roof. So these are perfectly reasonable requests. No, I didn't say what was unreasonable. Yeah, I don't have a number in front of me. I don't have every line in the budget. Here's a number, Scott. Come on. <laughs> Any further discussion? Someday I'll learn to bring the budget with me to commit. I'll get that one. No further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. PS4 resolution accepting grant from the Oswego County ATV Club related to enhanced ATV safety and enforcement. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second? Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? This is another thousand dollar grant that they're giving to uh, uh, the sheriff's office to increase enforcement and safety on the ATV trails. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, PS5, resolution awarding professional service contract, uh, RFP 22-EMO-001, mass fatality incident plan exercise. Got a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Captain, you want to just give us a quick uh, or Rich, want to ask a question? Go ahead. So just a quick question. Um, this was passed the paper there. Uh, you have pros, pros and cons on this. And no examples of similar projects? Yeah, so Road Planning has done our group plan. They just didn't have um, a list of similar projects that they worked on that had to do with mass fatality exercise. So that's why we met with that. So there was no similar projects that they had been working on before that told us that they had the capabilities of doing it the way we wanted to have an exercise. The other company that we actually chose, they gave us some examples of where they had worked on that. So that's why, um, just, just comparing true. the two, you know, you definitely want someone that has it. You want the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so, we uh, can our people out for um, uh, Mass Fatality Incident Plan Exercise, a tabletop version of it. Um, we had set some grant funding along with some of our EMS funding. Um, to pay for that, 
Awesome. We came back with two different potential vendors and we chose one that was a little less expensive um, than the other, but also the uh, public proposal was very comprehensive and gave us great examples and gave us a lot about the planning team and they had the goals that we put out for it. They're also adding um, a web EOC component, so they actually offered us three components. We asked for two at a minimum, but they're going to do a third functional exercise with our online emergency management system, which is new to the county. So we thought that was a lot of value added that they brought to the table. Okay, any further discussion? Questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any votes? Motion carries. Right, before we before we move on to that, I just want to talk about briefly about the training that's being offered for the legislators. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to just give a quick blurb on that, update these guys? Uh, sure. So and now it's an email. And that was a piece that will come on one of them. Um, so we have Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 training. Generally, in order for us to continue to receive grant funding in our department, both the chairman has to complete Tier 1 training each year, which is for your chairman of the legislature, county executives. Tier 2 must be completed by emergency management directors. Um, so that keeps us with our funding stream. Tier 3 is basically for your chief elected officials of your municipalities. Um, we wanted to extend it to the legislature to come um, because you're going to be helping your municipalities probably through an emergency of some sort. And it's going to pretty much give them an idea of what do they do in an emergency, how do they declare state of emergencies, they're going to need our office to help them with that, and what support system they might need. Do they need light towers or because they don't put light on the subject? Maybe they don't have any in the municipality, but we can link them to that resource. So it's really just to define that for them. So the municipalities, your county, your, not your county, your town highway superintendents, it's a good over, overview of what you would do in an emergency and what resources we can bring to the table for you. And, and we invited you all in it for that just so you guys had more knowledge of what you might be brought to you to say, hey, how do I get this? And you're going to say, well, you're going to call the emergency management office to help you with that. <laughs> Even like public information, like if you want to declare it and we need to put that information out for you, we can do that public information side too. So we've done that with Kevin on various occasions where if the 911 system is down, is, um, like if people can't use their regular landlines or down, um, use an alternate means for telephone, we still put that out in public information. October 13th yes. at ESL. Yes. Oh, at the JIC. It's at the JIC, which is the Joint Information Center, um, 10 Airport Drive, don't do 10 Airport Road, I'm not get you in the same place. Um, so we'll have it over there. There'll be some, because it's from 5 to 9, we'll have something over there for people to have for drinks or food. So just You're all welcome to come. It has to be signed up through the learning management system. And as Mark said, it's a very cumbersome system and it's hard. It's not any better than the previous system that they use. So if you have problems registering, just contact our office. Terry is pretty good about managing people who do that system. So um, it's not an easy if you don't use it very often. And last if you can't get signed up, just let our office know you're coming and we can at least get it to the state and let them know and then they can do it on the back side and just register. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's return to Mr. Klein's question now that the chair of the had a question about the medical treatment. Yeah, it, it, they, they, you know, the resolution for that. Just out of curiosity, it said, and, and several inmates with higher than usual medical needs. I'm just curious what that means. Two, two problems we ran into. One, we budgeted for 80, you know, we had during uh, COVID and with uh, Family farm, we're budgeted for about 80 inmates. We're back up to about 160. So that was part of the issue. And then the other issue, we had one particular in, inmate that, I'm sorry, incarcerated an individual that was, uh, we ended up having to have a split out amputated. And we eventually got him shipped off to a state facility. But that takes, by the time we could do that, he needed all kinds of special medical attention and just cost us a fortune. It was like last year when we had to airlift the guy to Rochester. We just can't budget for those things. We don't know they're going to occur. But so in this case, we had one particular uh, individual that needed a lot of treatment and we're just not budgeted for enough with our area population in back in the capacity. Now, you, you mentioned something which kind of put my ears up. You said, um, that you, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you have, last year we were running around 80 inmates 
and now we've doubled it. Are uh, the people that much more? Uh, are, we, are we doing a better job getting the, the, the thugs off the street, or no. is it just we got a bunch of? It's just a function of the bail reform. Nobody is being incarcerated. So what happens is they commit offense after offense after offense, and eventually they don't show up for these court appearances. Right. So then the judge, at some point, gets where they issue a bench warrant. And then they're picked up and brought in and, 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 and we knew it was that it was eventually going to be the outcome, but you know trying to lecture all the and what's going on in this perfect. Yeah. Uh, just one more thing. How are we, any of these inmates um, are we getting a store or effect from the fact that uh, many of the jails in the the state level were closed or that doesn't touch us. Oh, no, it does. It absolutely does. Because we have all these parole, parole violations. In years past, what would happen is you violate parole. You have, you know, you're on parole for five years, you violate. You come here, you have a hearing, and you're sent back to state prison to finish your term. That no longer happens. And essentially, shut down. So we're stuck with these parole to finish serving the time here. Not years, but certainly months months longer than they would have in the past. Was the foot injury prior to being incarcerated or something incurred? I, it wasn't necessarily an injury. It's elderly male. He was shooting the police. He was taken in custody. He's just, he, he's probably never going to make it out of jail. He's going to end the life care. Actually, he's a resident of, I believe, on Dodd County. His wife couldn't handle him, so she sent him up to camp. <laughs> oh, okay. And just abandoned him there. Took him out of a nursing home. And then said, well, he needs to be up at camp, not here. We feed him over here. And treat him like they'd be paying for the nursing home. So now, I would say we're paying for him, but luckily the state did take over. And I think, I'm sure, was it be 30 days or so, we have to reapply for them to keep him, but he's in the hospital, jail hospital, out towards Buffalo. Mm -hmm. uh, at least for now, we're not paying his medical. Any okay. further discussion? All right, let's move on to uh, bids. We've got a fire, breathing, air compressor, containment, fill station, and storage. Make a motion. So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Shane, why don't you scroll real quick? So this is the air compressor that will go in the new truck that was purchased a few months ago. Um, this is the uh, air compressor fill station that fills the FCPA cylinders that fires scuba tanks if they are in a dive. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. All right, CSI update. Our next meeting is on uh, September 22nd at 1000 hours here. Um, we discussed uh, a number of things, and one of the most probably uh, important things is the new terrorism plan. Uh, there's a uh, course at NYSEC that's offering uh, preparation for that plan, so we postponed everything until after we can meet the NYSEC. So we'll be meeting here on September 22nd at 1000 hours. If anybody's interested. All right, let's go into emergency management. Okay, uh, we're not in a bit of you know, Some stuff we're working on right now, uh, one thing we're looking at that should be coming down is our 2022 Homeland Security Grant. We should be getting a notification on what that's going to look for us this year with funding. Um, we are preparing right now, we have two being evaluated exercises by the end of the year, three training sessions leading up to those exercises, two additional days of EOC training where we bring our um, EOC participants in and they go through a, kind of a tabletop version of a radiological exercise. Um, so we're doing a lot of training on that piece to get that through um, with this year. Um, as I said earlier, I have done the tier two training. Both, of, both the chairman and I have completed our tier training for the year, which is good because last year we had to do that both in December. <laughs> so it's good to have that done. Um, we're still doing some response for uh, the health department. I know Renee had um, 
PPE request recently, and so we need to decide how we're going to handle that. This health department cannot use their funding source for that, so it's something we might need to talk to uh, the industry about when we're on. Um, we're still doing some naked goal this. We're still doing very limited testing at EMO for COVID, but right now about one a week or something like that, which is significantly decline. As for the drone, um, went to uh, summit training at Riskamy a couple weeks ago. We also used the Sheriff's Department drone at the county fair. Um, just you know, there's some representation to that. They've been working on this drone sense remote program that they're looking to put in place. Evans Group was working on something like that, so we'd like to push that through with a lot of support and help the city departments for that moving forward. We ordered a new drone that will replace the one that you guys very nicely approved the uh, budgetary mod for last month with some insurance refund. So we purchased a new drone for that piece. And we're working on a 2023 budget for that program. That's about it. Any questions? We have filled one of our open positions in EMO, uh, our radiological specialist position. He's going to start on. Um, Tuesday after the holiday. Um, we still have a part-time Vegas position open, but we're waiting to see what the newest um, famous uh, test in the current school for that. So, is there a schedule for that? Is that even scheduled? I think there's one in the fall. I don't know the exact date because they told us there wasn't anyone held the wrong list anymore, so we're waiting for the new list to come out. But I, think I think it's November 5th. So this is the oh. next schedule date. So we'll probably be without someone in the end of the year. Perfect. All right. Uh, EMS. So the uh, the EMT Corridor Pass and Metro wrapped up three people saying Corridor is needed for their next recertification. Um, the Burton Fault EMT class, sponsored by North Shore, had started. Uh, they were eight students. Some people had to leave. I think there was one individual taking the class who was from the Albany area who decided he didn't want to drive twice a week. Um, and a couple more students actually moved to the Mexico class. So, so that class had five students. Um, there will be an additional EMT course at McPhee Ambulance in Mexico. We're up to 10 students registered for that class. We're very excited about that. Um, Workforce New York, we've been continuing to partner with them. Uh, they're working with Mentor Ambulance for their fall academy. And they're also going to be working with our Mexico class as far as getting individuals who, who are not affiliated with an agency, giving them some funding if that's if they're obtaining the certification to become a professional EMT provider. So they're able to obtain some funding from our first year to pay for their classes. Just out of curiosity, are we tracking how many of those people that were paying for their classes that are actually sticking around and completing the classes? This is a brand new program. Um, this is our first wave of classes, so we, that's definitely something we can do. You can walk away from something and you don't have skin. Right. It's, Workforce New York is required to track that mm -hmm. as part of their funding stream. So sure. they'll they'll be reaching out um, to these individuals after to find out, you know, at mm -hmm. two months are you hired, at six months, etc. So they have benchmarks. So, mm -hmm. so we will be able to um, check with them and get yeah. that data. And there's a there is a screening process and an application process, and it's not just you know fill out some paperwork. They have to interview employers. They have to interview employees in that field and they do a thorough meeting with them to make sure that they're spending their money wisely as well. Do they have to pay that back if they don't if they don't follow yeah. through with themselves? So they could take the course and then and in a year move on somewhere else and yeah. to that for us. As far as is us for our sponsorship though, we're not having individuals because once Workforce New York puts their sample and approve on an individual, we're going to you know, make the money in the class. So we're not going to be losing money in EMS education. That's what it's doing. We just um, lose the person. We just lose the person. Uh, which also is, you know, that's downside. We're not losing the person and money for the class. So, so we're excited to keep continuing to be working with them in that regard. Yeah, and we will. We will lose some people. We had an EMT student that just graduated and went on a horrible CPR call and was ready to walk away. So, you know, the, the care piece of that is a component to that. Um, some people just, when they get really in it and see some horrible calls, decide this is not for them. That's good. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. It's not for them. 
Yeah. Um, local hospitals continue to struggle with their caseload in the emergency rooms. They're going to do the provision a lot. Seeing more and more. So with Syracuse and less and less of a street with health, they've been doing a fantastic job recently staying off diversion, staying open for ambulances. Um, I don't think they've been a diversion at least a week or so, maybe yeah. two weeks. So they've been, they've been doing really well. But as recently as last month, they had 35 people in their ER and they have 17 beds. So it's just been crazy busy. But we're you know, very happy with them as a good working, good working relationship with them. They've been very, you know, they're staying open, which is good. Um, as Kathy mentioned, COVID testing has, has gone down, but one week we've seen a slight uptick recently from like one in a month to one in a week, so I, I don't know, it's probably still kind of... Test or positive, positive hits? Where it's, a lot of people are coming to test have been positive. I would say maybe about 70%. So we're really only getting one person per week coming in to get tested, right. and some of them are getting positive. Not More than half of those coming are, be, are testing positive, but okay. that's they're also... Good. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Most yeah. of the time they've done home tests. Right, they don't want to come out of yeah. the yeah. yeah. after the IHOP at home tests. So. That's, and that's you know, that's something awesome. about, too, Phil, and I don't know if you're aware of this, stuff. I know that we had a policy within the county for county employees that you could only have one test per day. Yeah. And I think that was a good idea I think with it being two and a half years long now, I'm not. I'm thinking that there's some people that are going to come with their third round of it if they have that, you know. And I'm curious if they charge just with that policy at all or no. They have, they have not, but I'll uh, talk to Julie about it. Because I think it's just recently somebody we knew was the third time. Yeah. Yeah. You certainly don't want showing up for work. No. And I don't know. And I don't know if that was a county. I, I'm not, I don't think that was a county policy. Okay. State health. And it may have been state health. I just remember like it just seems like I don't think we thought that we would get this far that there would be people that have had multiple times. That's all I was thinking. And uh, the last point, we just uh, we've been working very closely with Shane and his people with uh, MCI equipment and uh, some emergency vets and some new. Uh, at American Rescue Response Task Force tags have been getting deployed for the county, so uh, we're very excited about all that and getting some new stuff out in the field and helping prepare stuff we can train with for the MFI uh, coming up in a little bit too. So. In line with that question for you, um, we had an ARPA funding thing with an ambulance and we were funding the equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, how'd that work out? Did you no, stuff? <laughs> So, um, yeah, it was NOCA. They were, they had a power stretcher, which allows people to um, have less wear and tear on their body with the assistance of lift. And then you also had a piece of equipment fly car. So um, I, I can double check with NOCA to see if that's purchased and installed. I don't know where the status of that is, but they were very thankful they could get another ambulance and a fly car. Officers. Two officers. There are there and bullet is running. Um, are trying to jail. <laughs> Things happen. Our street. People are going to work. Heads out. Heads are going to get. Um, 160 
survey uh, here was part part of got them to where we mount that in the facility remotely or with some difficulty getting it Yeah, we'll just not um, about that. We might have an be able to reach in terms of sure and I live having all this just gave uh, tra trainer class. Do that. That's a benefit for us. Um, update on capital projects, burn building. Our, our, excuse me, arrived on 8 8. Um, we're working, trying to get the ceiling back in the upstairs, so the downstairs taken out. The, uh, Seven to the PSV truck. Truck may be. Um, staff is building inspection. The county staff has been appreciative. Um, so that some of the most recent going process. That's with this new security. So I talk with and the Knox boxes that are mounted on the county buildings. Um, they're, they're master keys in those boxes the fire departments have access to. I talked with Rick the other day, possibly putting in a card access to make it a little easier. Obviously, the key fobs are working um, to be able to get access to it. But, we had that discussion. It's nice. So somebody working on it. We've also been talking about we're able to restructure things with that one department to bring video and stuff in that that can be a task that that person could as well uh, perform, have remote access, be able to open, lock and unlock doors. Because it's not only the fire department just be able to unlock the exterior door, it could be interior doors and stuff as well. So it moves forward. Police departments. It, uh, Police departments will have access to those max boxes. Yeah. Um, it's strictly a fire department program. So, um, but it was like an active shooter or something like that, allowing law enforcement to gain access to the building at certain doors that hopefully our uh, card access would be extremely important at a time, at a timely manner. You know, at a specific time, instead of just make sure we leave, you leave the door unlocked behind you. That we're, we're not going to have people do that. So. So you'll be able to remotely unlock the, all the doors, all the doors or specific doors, based off of I would say based off of the video that we're seeing and the communications we're having back and forth with units that are responding into the scene. Because you don't want to, if you got an active shooter again, you don't necessarily want to unlock every single door in the building either. If it's an active shooter, correct. Sure. Structure, you know, fire, you know, fire alarm. That's a different story. But so. That's, we've had some good discussions back and forth good, good. with that program. Yeah, good. Well good. done. So, all right, let's move on to 911 next since we're on the floor. So, our uh, call volume continues to stay up where it's been now for the past uh, over two years. So, we're uh, busier than we've ever been before. Um, and since the last time we've met, I've lost two more people. One, fortunately, didn't leave the county, went to the health department, one left the county, left the state. So, um, so that puts us at a total of uh, seven open full-time positions again where we were last year. Uh, it also puts each of the shifts at So over time, it's exploding at the moment. Um, a couple months ago, current review past. You received the new list, of the list, and have uh, interviewed the applicants out of uh, 
the list um, to told us that uh, they had waited so long they had taken other jobs, unfortunately. And uh, the other three, we luckily were able to have seven openings. We do have three people that are going to be starting um, day after Labor Day. But it'll be four and a half months or so of uh, recruit class before they get up to the floor. Um, so really, it'll be almost the end of the year before we start seeing it any positive impact from their work. Um, we end up having to do another provisional hiring towards the end of the year, beginning of next year, um, just because we have so many opens. And I've also been told that our telecommunicator exam is typically the first week of January, which has been pushed back to the middle of February. So next year's list we probably won't see until August, which is going to put us that much further behind again. So, um, so we prepared for budget. I am working on reinvent some different ideas for 911, bring some new things in. So, um, we'll mm -hmm. further discussions on that and discuss the budget. But uh, um, there are uh, personnel is definitely an issue with 911 at the moment. Um, so, beyond that, we are uh, continuing to work towards the. Uh, First responder drone program, as uh, Kathy alluded to, which are some of the stuff that hopefully might give us a little bit of a new interest in 911. Um, we've also uh, been working on the tow law. Um, the, uh, we are currently reaching out to each of the current tow companies to get the updated information, to make sure we have email addresses so we can send them the applications and confirming their addresses. And it just goes to further show that we we did the right thing because we found like seven out of, I think they said they called 18 or 19 as of uh, this morning when I left. And uh, so far, seven tow companies, their contact info of their locations were not correct because they weren't using accurate business records or however you want to say it with the tow So, So we're going to get all of that cleaned up. It's just <clears throat> not a quick thing. So, and then uh, Sheriff and I are working out the next steps of uh, the uh, inspections and stuff along those lines. So, um, we did have a small, luckily small, fire at uh, one of our uh, uh, one of our generators at one of our tower sites. Luckily, it wasn't on the primary system; it was on a backup system that uh, didn't affect anything. Luckily, but uh, it did make for uh, some fun times with uh, Shane and myself on trying to break into a tower site. So, um, but uh, we. Uh, in that issue resolved, so all the fire coordinators now will have an actual key that works for our tower sites and uh, don't have any issues there. Um, we are also, we hired a part-time typist here a couple months ago, I believe I mentioned, and she is very good with social media. So along with trying to come up with some new ideas for 911, we're also going to be starting a strong social media push on Facebook, Instagram, and probably later in the year, Twitter, um, because there's a lot of people that just don't understand what 911 is. It's not just somebody that was just standing there with my phone sitting in front of them and they push a button to dispatch fire department. So you know, hopefully we can try and open up those uh, curtains a little bit and show some uh, show off some, some of the cool things that we're doing at 911 and try and see if we get a little bit more interest than we had in the past year. So, um, so we are definitely trying to address what's going on. It's just uh, there's there's a lot to it, and unfortunately, A is a big one, and schedule is another one that is apparently the two big complaints that we're getting. So, let me leave the film now. This is going to do its own promotion for 911. We had a conversation a while back about uh -huh. the county wide promotion program. Uh -huh. Discussed it. Where, where's that at? Uh, they have, uh, HR has a monthly request there to fund it so that we can begin doing exactly what we talked about. So we do the follow-up exactly what we said. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, yep. Would we consider video with that? Like yes. It's like we yes. do with the police at the city level? Yeah, yeah and this would be a, a short video clips promoting working for the county that would get youth social media to kind of get their attention. Have we talked about getting out to the schools? Yep. To get something going there to, to market? We've been having some discussions with uh, trying to get in like the fire departments and stuff are getting in for uh, fire prevention week. Try and see if we can try and angle some of the now one aspect of that as well. Um, 
and uh, our uh, public outreach person is also trying to uh, get dates of when they're doing um, job fairs and things along those as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's time we update information though. Um, I mean, a lot of the stuff <coughs> it's the same type of information we're doing 10, 15 years ago, and really in the past yeah. 10 years. The system's completely different. The product, you know, product Mar and marketing, different. marketing with the youth is definitely different oh, also. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, so it's where everybody's like, oh, Facebook is great. Oh, Instagram is even better. <coughs> and I want, we are willing to try whatever we can. Yeah. No. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> um, so check with Julie because they, they've been looking at the plan down there. So okay. Be great. Well, we. With the stuff we've been talking about lately, we did have a discussion okay. about that last week. So, yes, and, and perhaps we should have somebody on a countywide level going around and talking to the schools instead of individual departments trying to do it. Yeah, yeah, get somebody in there can pitch every department. Yeah, yeah. So um, this book is the step up. Yes. As, as much as trying to get the bodies, it seems like also though, it's such a delay or in between the tests, yeah. is that really, is there any way for us to get, or to plea for more tests? So okay. that is a plea for more rapid tests, and this is that happening. The state did create a task force in the state budget to reform civil service, but that's going to take a while. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, all the counties are screaming to get these tests administered more rapidly. And the results of that come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because by the time you get the results, people have already found a little bit. Mm -hmm. We saw that. I mean, it was two out of five that we had left over at the end. So, mm -hmm. and we're not allowed to do our own. Why is what, that? Yeah. Do we know why? I don't know why, but that is that is another thing that counties have been suggesting to the state is to allow, even if we're under, mm -hmm. do it by state state's own guidelines, run our own tests. Right. There must, there must be a way, though, that we could push for expediting these tests for EMO, you know, first responder kind of tests. Uh, should be able to push for that somehow. Is it a state or federal? Yeah. State yeah. resolution. Yeah. State service. Yeah. 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 And they haven't had it since then, so we've had you know people in that position since then that haven't even taken the test yet for a position they've been in for a couple of years at the time. So they ordered the test and just took them on the state. So how, how many months for the test from the test to the results right now on average? Which so our people and signed up yeah. in December. Yep. When they signed up for the test, they took the test the uh, January sixth, twenty twenty two. And we received them, I think it was just after July 4th. Yeah, it's about six months at least. And when it, when, what's the spacing between um, the tests? So January 6th? So for us every year. Once it's a year. Once a year? Uh, can, that's can you what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. once. Yeah. And I mean, one, it's once a year. Yeah. Well, one of the good points to make is exactly what Kathy was saying. Because they hold the tests, some of these tests so infrequently that you can have multiple people in the position between tests. So civil service is running their operation in such a way that it makes their operation lose. So okay. what's the point if you're not going to have the tests? Right. Uh, if you're having people in the position. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Richard. Um, I'm sorry. I think Frank that was your first term when you were talking about it. Back when Mike Yellen was on there, on the, the director, there was a lot of discussion from Kim and a lot of the team directly from the state about regionalizing 911. And I know the technology has gotten a tremendous, 10 times better than what it was. Uh, is it time that we start looking at that or start talking that up? I mean, it, not for nothing, but this discussion you have with people and like that, and you're doing a great job with your skill, but we still have to service the people. <laughs> That's the part of what. Especially with an emergency, it's time to look at regionalizing this and combining with counties. I mean, that's another thing. 
So back then, that was the regionalization of trying to get all the individual fire departments and stuff even under one umbrella, which is Swift County is we're completely consolidated now in one center. There's still some counties that have 30 some PSAPs across their county where all the individual police departments and fire departments still dispatch themselves. So looking at the bigger picture, we have been having some discussions at the consortium level um, about some, some differences. Call taking wise, it can kind of, it, it could be a model that could end up being functional with some training, which we can obviously work our way through. Dispatch, though, even within the validation in Oswego County is very difficult. Um, doing what Oswego Fire Department wants, Fulton Fire Department wants, and then this individual uh, volunteer agency, it gets very, very deep, very quick. And if you go any bigger than the county level where they are all within the same agreements and under, like the fire coordinator, we can kind of work together, it's going to get very, very messy very quick. It's not something that can't be done. It's just going to be a long process. And it, 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 will, it will take a lot of MOUs and a lot of meetings in order to make that happen. It was that many years ago. We couldn't go to the so I mean, after nothing, yes. we got to start talking about this. I mean, now, guys, I mean, you know, Frank and I've been on this, you know, committee. We've been in the county a long time. He had a hiatus for a couple of years, but these discussions are the same discussions we get ten years ago. They haven't changed. They just haven't. Okay. Um, I was, as far as testing was concerned, I was just going to offer the example of EMS. During COVID, they were not bringing people in to do um, testing in a certain location anymore. They changed to computer-based test. It was about, I would say, a four-month period before all of our testing what was transitioned over to that, and that's a, a state office, right? The Department of Health, that comes from the Department of Health Bureau of EMS. Um, and the students walk away with a certificate if they pass. So I'm curious if they can just walk away with a score and then generate a list from that. But I know there's at least one department at the state level that has walked this line of computer-based testing. I just want to go jump back to recruitment again. Um, I know the sheriff does this. I don't know if other departments have done this or if they can do it. They have the ability, but internships Consider doing do you do interns? So we do um, we do have people that come and uh, sit with our call takers, um, New Visions platform, um, and then we also started working with uh, some of the colleges now too. So I believe I want to say we're very close to an agreement with CCC to uh, have a public safety students start coming in. Um, I know they've also uh, City Post is another one that recently has started uh, showing interest in that. So. Um, so I mean, that, that's about as far as we've gone to date because the coordination and the logistics of it is a little bit more difficult from our side if they're not part of a group, um, but it's definitely something that we can you know, work towards. How about the person again? Go ahead and make it a little tough. I it's not for a land of it, it's just it's a very, like, like Kevin said, on our side of it, it's preparing it, um, so you've got a, it's got to be a structured plan, and we just have been sort of busy lately. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, do, do we have any paid, uh, like, summer programs or anything like that? Yeah, for kids. Um, can we get something like that going, maybe spark a little interest, throw a couple dollars their way, they're more likely to show up. No, like, the P-TECH program is, is um, mm -hmm. Engineering, manufacturing. Do we have a program or a city? Can we check to see if cities even consider putting a program together for first responders? They, they have a program that they're actually looking at paid internships. And I know you provided some details in the past on internships. Uh, the state and feds have certain requirements for internships, uh, so you don't trigger wage now. Us. We used to have a summer employment program that allowed for internships or just summer employment, depending on how it was structured. Uh, we, we've also run issues with some of the applications for internships being antiquated and asking for things that shouldn't ask for. And, uh, that's been taken care of. 
Um, right. It's Department of Labor. So it's not supposed to be a material like benefit to the. To the, the follow it, so you're not going against the you can't put them on a copy machine and replace other. It's supposed to be an educational experience, as opposed to labor based. Right. Sometimes managing interns takes more yeah. work than the work you get out of. Correct. Sometimes. But I think there's great, there's great yes, interest in and opportunities to yeah. see if it's a, it's a job that they might be interested in pursuing. Yes, so we, I think well, we know unless they sat down in the room and saw what we were doing, right? It yeah. sounds mm -hmm. like yeah. Which is why those observation programs, you know, yeah. we have gotten a couple people out of those. So, okay. It's a very good idea. The county used to have a summer program. I actually did it when I was 18 years old. They still do. Probation. Uh, they still do. Workforce still has their summer work program mm -hmm. for the county. For county, yeah, for, yes. They so will maybe expand that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. not, not the one that you and I hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I should bring it back. Maricopa. Maybe we just need to get the information Yeah, I, 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 well, I think that's key. I think we need to get the information out to the schools and the people so they're aware of it. I mean, if there's a number of programs that already exist, there's no point in reinventing the wheel trying to do something different. We've just got to get the information out and maybe promote it a little bit better so that the kids can jump on board and maybe get their feet wet. I know they have career days at a lot of the schools, and that would be a perfect time to have runners. Yeah, it might be a great time. We've got to have somebody there. It's kind of like the marketing that they did like for the right. forensics course. So all the kids are watching CSI and yeah. television, so they had all this idea that they were going to be into all these forensics. So, so City Bosey would run a summer program with maybe a four to six week program regarding forensics. Something like that would be great, just to give them an intro as to what they're looking at, make it fun kind of thing. Okay. I, we're working towards that aspect as well. However, we need to turn around and I'm going to need some support pay-wise as well, because I can work on the schedule thing within the department, but I got a kid that's looking at coming out of high school, I can go work at McDonald's for $18 an hour, I can come work at now one for eighteen sixty seven. But you have a gap there. You have a gap between so. your 14-year-olds, 16-year-olds who can't get jobs, who are looking for them for the summer. Agreed. Some can, some can't. It depends on their income on most of the programs that we run. But if you were to take some type of an educational program that would make base an interest and take these younger children and, and bring them into some type of a program through the summer or on a holiday to introduce them to these fields, then maybe we could draw some attention to them and bring them in after a couple of years. Okay. I mean, it's not going to be an instant fix, but it's a start. And in addition to that, I, I can't imagine that many kids would prefer Asking people if they want fries and flipping burgers over Saturday night. I don't think it's even. I don't even think it's on the Saturday. I don't know. It's so like a last resort thing. You want to work at McDonald's. You take one years. echo call, which is a pull arrest on somebody not breathing, and you're lucky that they come back the next day. So it's, it's, you know, it comes down to the same thing. There's, there's a lot of stuff all mine. But it's 14 or 16 year old who put people in training for you know for the two years, and then when they get out of high school, they say, well, "Okay, I'm going to make you know 60 cents more." to go and be, have all that responsibility. I'm sorry, when I graduated from college, I could have been a teacher for $7,500 a year, I've gone to Xerox and made $15,000 a year as a supervisor. You know where I went? I went to Xerox to be a supervisor $15,000 a year, because I, but I've gone through four years of school to be an educator, okay? So the money is the big issue, okay? And we, and it's not just here in Surreal County, you know, I know that everybody's asking for money everywhere, but the thing is, the Swigo County is hurting. Dick has pointed out this is a service that we are supposed to supply to the taxpayers, and we have to figure out a way to do it. And I know it's not easy. I know we're dealing with the union, all that, but we have to put all that aside and we have to say, this is what we're going to do. That's, that's all I'm saying. You know, I'm not you know, pushing for everybody to make a million dollars, but I'm just looking for the services that we render to be paid properly. That's all. I'm done. Thank you. No. Um, along with what Lori was saying, the P Tech program, they at their initial year that these kids go into it, they have one month in the summer that they go up to BOCES and they get initiated into this. 
and the school pays for all of the transportation up there. So I don't know how much additional it would be to have something going on at the same time that they're doing. It was a small thing in the summer, but it piqued these kids to get it going, and then it <coughs> repeat. I understand the money, but I understand also if you hook them and make them understand, they form a team, they get with friends, and you know what? Sometimes that's what it takes to make that final. Yeah. I mean, I understand the money is there, but I also understand that I'd like to have faith that some of our future adults will understand the need. They're fresh. Service. They are fresh, They're young fresh. brains that need to be molded. Yeah, and we have to show them. Give them an opportunity at least. I was just thinking of an untapped resource, perhaps, which would be like my generation, a lot of people my age are retiring from one job and are looking for a second job. And I think maybe marketing to those individuals who have a good work ethic, you know, nothing against the youth, I've got to start there too, but there's people out there looking for employment that actually would be good employees. And they're over 55. What we run into with that is our schedule issue. We were working like seven days a week, seven days a week, twenty-four hours a day, holidays, and twelve-hour shift. But that might be a reason to so, look at something differently. Four days on, three days off. I work for other. I mean, there's definitely people looking for work that are older. That's and, so the schedule and, and the pay are the two big things that I like. Yeah. And the hindrance to that also is that they're retired. They know, if the government retires, they want to make so much. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of my issues are nights and weekends. The newer generation just doesn't want to work those nights and weekends anymore. So, and that's when people call. So, what's the advantage to working twelve-hour shifts for you? I just okay. left just the less days, 14 days off a yep. month. Is that? Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. Oh, what is Plus, you get a weekend every other weekend. Correct. And the old schedule, you move one day every three weeks. You used to be, you get Wednesday and Thursday off, you work three weeks, and you got Thursday and Friday. This one here, every other weekend, you get a long weekend. So they're with their family more. It's a great shift, the 12 hour shift. That's probably I mean, I wish I had a computer there. At least you can be home every right. weekend. Okay. I'm just the jail is actually looking to switch their schedule to something similar. I mean, that's a very schedule. I was just curious because I knew there had to be some type of an advantage there. That <laughs> it works out better for the person. It works out better for coverage, and it also the overtime and stuff it makes it easier as well. Well, just to, to wrap things up, there's nothing further on this. I just want to reiterate Mr. Klein's point is that we have great conversations, we have great ideas, and then they die. We leave here, we come back next month and we have other great ideas and other great notions, and they die. There's no follow-up or, or, or uh, intensified movement on any of these great ideas. Sir. Last year when you had your open house, you're all the fire departments. But if you do fire departments, we'll see you home. I think it would be a better thing if you had that open house been centralized and say you have one in Plast or all well out and like the fire department personnel to come in and set up a table and say this is Redfield, this is Arwell. Because most of the barns are on open. I went to quite a few. We did that exact same thing with the town of Hastings. We had twelve people that showed up two years ago. Three years ago. It was twenty nineteen. Yeah. Exactly. We had forty five almost fifty firefighters there from the different fire departments. And we had 12 people that actually showed up. So it, it's it's the time and energy that they committed to that. They didn't they get, get 12 the people. They didn't get the return. Correct. And that's, as we discussed in the previous call to have, is that these volunteer departments are barely making their minimums now. Calls, drills, trainings, you know, fundraisers. And now, hey, we want you to do this. And they go down, they spend the whole day on Saturday at the firehouse to send their families. And they get two people to show up and nobody, nobody fills out an application to join. Okay, we did so it didn't shift. So that it, that's the problem we're up against right now is these departments are frustrated because they're they're putting the effort forward to get people to come in, but the people aren't coming. So that's that statewide movement of uh, in October every year they try to push that and it's just not the same as they get down in certain areas of the state. Yeah. Well it's because you're in a rural area you're gonna have to try 
I think that the citizens should come to one location, whether it's Altmire or Plask Act, and have, a, have food there or something to draw them in. And the fireman can send a guy up, one representative, and, and he pitches for his own department. It's true. If you want people to show up, you got to put food out. Yeah, that's a, you got to do something. We had hot dogs. People show up. Hot dogs. 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 1.38 million total across the county for gas. We have year to date already spent 1.383 million. So it's uh, $3,000 over what was originally budgeted. We've moved in 722,000 and we have 709 left. So we're, you know, these, that's, these extra budget mods are, are necessary to get us to the end of the year. Because even what we've already moved into those lines isn't going to get us through the end of the year. Um, so basically, uh, so far, uh, the revised budget is 2.1 for gas, 2.1 million. Uh, we're probably going to end up somewhere around 2. between 2.4 and 2.6 by the end of the year, basically doubling our gas budget this year. Uh, now, when you do the budget, you're working with the different departments at this point, I, I take it. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, in a couple of weeks, I started moving. Right. How are you looking at that? Because price of diesel hasn't come down. So right now, I will probably uh, begin the draft budget based on this year's fuel costs. Uh, what part of this year? The present or three months ago? or well, I know it's been trending months. back down. I'll start the budget being conservative, taking probably be around a couple million for next year. Because I don't know how much it's going to go back down. <coughs> Renee, you had a question? Just real quick, though, we do have some PPE requests that have come in. And, um, we need to order some things. Okay. So if you could just give EMO direction on whether or not there's funding for that and um, there is where it should come from. We still have money in the COVID account uh, that's, in, uh, that's in my office. So just let us know what you, what you need. It can be purchased. Okay. Thank you. Uh, lastly, just to update everybody before I put it down quick. Cayuga uh, College, I spoke to them last week about the academy, uh, and they're moving forward to their board with a request for an architectural report to put bathrooms in. Um, so they don't move as quickly as we'd like, but they're moving. You know, it's a, it's a drawn out process. They're, they want to do it, but you know, academia works at its own pace. You know, we have a meeting, we have a meeting, we have a meeting. So, um, but they did say that they still want to do this and they still want to move forward. We're just going a little slow and we prefer to slow. And then lastly, Don, you got anything you want to add for today, John? Yeah, just back to staffing. We have eight people in the academy right now, just like number one. They won't be fully functional on the road, on their own until spring. By that time, we'll probably be back up to seven or eight openings. So it's Sure. Uh, we have a couple executive order things that we are trying to uh, meet the deadlines on. One of them being the terrorism plan. Uh, fortunately, unlike most executive orders, this one's gaining us some funding. We got hundred and seventy-three thousand dollar grant on that one. So we're putting that together, we got less than a week here to get that plan, the initial plan in. And the other one was that I wanted to let everybody know about was this math program. Medically assisted treatment for the jail. We thought until recently that we were good going with just contracting the farm and having them do it. Until some of our medical people sat down with farm and we actually looked at the contract they were proposing and they just had an assumption that we would transport our people to farm and for treatment. We're being told that it's anywhere from 10 people that we can expect to be in this program up to 76% of our jail population. Mm -hmm. That's stats that are coming from across the state. So obviously if we got 150, 160 inmates, we would start talking about transporting over 100 people a day. We just cannot do that. Uh, we would have to have 20, 30 more corrections officers and deputies just for transport. So 
that plan has pretty much been scrapped. We're trying to work out something with Farm where they would come to the facility. If they do not do that, if they're not agreeable to that, we're going to have to do it in-house uh, with our own medical staff, which means we have one administrator. She's a physician's assistant. She runs a program in Dog County. She's agreed to take out an additional day. So we'll be looking for funding for that, for an additional day for her to be on call for the program. But we also miss that element of counseling, which means we're going to have to hire somebody to do that. The executive order requires group and individual counseling sessions for anybody with a drug substance abuse problem, which means we're going to have to hire some kind of a social worker, or psychologist, or psychiatrist, or something. Somebody to run it. So we, we're going to have a couple positions that unfortunately doesn't come with funding from the state, but it's been crammed down our throat again like usual. So we, we're going to have some funding for us shortly because this, uh, when's that? December 31st? I'm not, no, October. October. So there's drug treatment program. I know there are a lot of uh, filter requests from the all the department heads now spend the opioid money. This program is going to be expensive. I'm ready to look at it. It's going to be very expensive. So, uh, get money for shooting your work for that program. Thanks. Rich? Yeah, the chair just signed a uh, certification to receive the Allergan settlement on the opioid litigation. We expect that very soon. To the chair's point, the opioid settlements, there are restricted and unrestricted portions. This is right over the plate as far as substance use disorder, and mm -hmm. uh, they, it's multi-year uh, for many of these settlements. We have to expend money uh, to comply with the settlement terms, so Matt would be a prime candidate, in my opinion, for the portion of the opioid settlements. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Any, any other further questions? Any other discussion? We have finished business. Can we report with motion? Motion adjourned. Second. Second.